Alright, what's up guys, Triple C here. It's been a very long time since I've done a tutorial. I think it's more than three months back. Um, sorry about that. I think I'll be doing more tutorials in the future now. Um, this tutorial is going to be a pro tips tutorial because basically um, also a lot of my old tutorial, there are outdated techniques in there uh, where people have figured out much, much more efficient and better ways to do stuff. So I'll just quickly go through a few pro tips here. And the one thing I want to add, we've been talking about this with some creators lately, is that um, if you're new to creating, um, watch out that you use new tutorials. Also look at old ones definitely because it's always handy to know where we're coming from and to understand all the techniques. But be aware that if you watch old tutorials, there's probably new and better methods nowadays. Also, if you're starting to create, you know, just start small, you know, don't try to build the biggest stunt you can imagine right away, because chances are big, you're not going to do very well on it, you know, just start with like jump races, some simple stuff, and then, then continue building and looping, do a wall ride, stuff like that, you know, just figure it out, get used to the creator, uh, understand the mechanics and the physics of the creator. This is also actually a point why it might be useful to watch some old tutorials, as long as you keep in mind that there are um, newer methods nowadays because um, the more you actually understand what you're doing in the creator the more creative you'll eventually become you know so you're not just copying techniques but you'll always find your own solution in every instance basically so yeah without further ado let's go into the pro tips all right guys so let's jump right into it um pro tip number one when you start laying down props in your race you start out with the blue barrier one category to the left are the dynamic props as you see here you never ever want to lay down a dynamic prop until you're done uh, creating your race you don't even want to scroll over the category so just memorize yeah now it's messed it up already for me just memorize where the dynamics are they are left to the uh, barriers and right to rocks and trees never ever even scroll over it because they will break your race once you start laying down dynamics in the middle of a race uh, either normal props start turning dynamic or um, certain props just uh, disappear magically and reappear at different places so never ever touch the dynamic props you can only touch them when you're done with your race and you laid everything down that's when you save your race and you come back into it and then you can lay down some dynamic props and you can lay down some fruit stands or some gas tanks or whatever just to guide people through the race basically um yeah if you just want to build like uh to make it more obvious where people go hold up where's the fruit stand here when you're done with all your props and you're not going to change anything that's when you lay down the dynamics all in one go and then you save it and go out again but before that never ever touch the dynamic props they will break your race they broke this oh, look now it happened i picked it up again now i've got a red container here let's see if we just take uh let me just show this to you guys what happens here i'll just lay this train car down here and if you see the dynamic props down there um, now it says three placed if I place this train car which isn't a dynamic prop now it'll say four dynamic props placed so yeah um, they broke this with the ill-gotten gains update and uh, it hasn't been fixed yet they only fixed the stacking issue there's a lot of stuff broken in the creator and apparently I heard they've got like uh, 20 programmers working on this night and day but they can't find a way to fix this so guys never ever touch the dynamic props they will break your race let's test it real quick I'll show you what it does Now you see now normal props just turn dynamic you can actually make some funny stuff with it but when you do it intentionally and you know how it works you might get you might get a good laugh out of it but it's actually not funny at all because they're just it's just like sabotage you know you're building on a stunt for two hours all of a sudden by accident you just scroll over the dynamic props by mistake and what happens is just like random props start disappearing so looping like random um, ramps will start disappearing and they're replaced by blue barriers or bushes at random locations i mean it's it's a joke you know so just please never touch them okay pro tip number two um 
basically when you're building a race just work with the two player starting grid at the beginning because it's much easier to just move it around on the map depending on where you're building stunts and just quickly go and test the stunt uh, just mess with the 30 player starting grid when you're done with your race basically you can do that as a last step but there's no need in doing it in the beginning like i said just move it around on the map depending on where you are and uh, always uh, test your stunts easily and this would also bring us to pro tip number three which is actually how you can uh, glitch a small starting grid with a 30 player supercar race so basically uh, supercars are always on a medium grid by default so if I take a 30 player race here, um, it takes up a lot of space actually. So if you're somewhere in the city in narrow streets, it'll be tough to get like 30 cars uh, in there, you know, um, they probably won't fit. So there's a little glitch to that, how you can glitch uh, supercars or any class for that matter onto a small starting grid. So what you do, you first select a small starting grid which is actually only available for motorbikes and for bicycles. So you first lay down a small starting grid with motorbikes or with bicycles, doesn't matter. So you lay this down. Now what you want to do is you want to save your race. Okay, after you have saved your race, what you now do is you go to race details, go to available vehicles, uh, no, before you go to available vehicles, um, sorry, um, so you save your race, then you go to starting grid size, and now you can just magically put it back to medium grid, even though you've only got motorcycles and bikes in there. Then you go to available vehicles, and now you can select all the other classes again. So now I select the super class, and uh, if I now go to available vehicles and turn the motorcycles off, you see, we've glitched uh, supercars in a small starting grid, which is really, really helpful if you want to start your race in narrow areas. Okay, yeah, um, pro tip number four would actually be, um, you can actually test your race online with your friends before publishing it. Uh, I think a lot of people don't know this because I see a lot of people publishing their jobs just in order to be able to test it online what you actually have to do if you go on a test here on your race you have this red exclamation mark and it'll say test your race you must complete a valid test before you can publish your race now if you complete a valid test in the creator which is basically only one lap you have to complete one lap and then you have a valid test this um, exclamation mark will disappear after that you can save your race and then you can start it up online under my jobs and test it with your friends now your friends won't be able to rate it yet and they will also not be able to bookmark it yet but it's really neat actually just after completing a valid test in the creator save it and you can just play it online i think you can even include it in playlists it's just unpublished you know so people won't be able to bookmark it Okay, pro tip number five. Let's see, um, that was checkpoint orientation. Um, yeah, this is a really good one. I mean, this. I wish I would have known about this long time ago. I think who got me onto this was, I think it was String King. We were talking about LTSs. And he said that uh, this, the orientation of a starting point basically memorizes the orientation and you can transfer it over to props. Uh, same thing also works for races. So um, if you take a prop and lay it down, but I'll just get some uh, ramps here, for example. So if we just uh, want to figure out an angle for the ramp and we say, okay, we're going to start building at exactly this angle here. Now, what you do next is you go to checkpoints and you lay a checkpoint uh, down next to it. And now this checkpoint has the orientation memorized. So you can now basically start building at another place. And if I say I want to build something over here with this orientation, you know, you just start building it. And later you want to continue building over here to get exactly the same orientation back with just rotating it. You know, you'll never get it 100%. You know, you'll come close to it, but like you'll never get it 100% exactly the same back. So what you just do as you go on checkpoints you pick up your checkpoint cancel it out again and bam you've got your orientation back you know you've got exactly the same orientation as this one so it's really really helpful 
Uh, what's also pretty cool, if you're, for example, building a looping, you can use this um, because you want to work with two exactly opposite angles when you build a looping or other stunts for that matter. First, figure out um, your second prop that it's exactly opposite to the first one. Yeah, and this is not 100%, but just for showing you guys real quick here. So now I've got almost, I've got exactly this um, opposite angle. I lay this one down here and place a checkpoint next to it. And now this checkpoint will have that orientation memorized. So now I can just comp uh, continue building anywhere, or I can switch sides. I can always get my orientation back easily by just picking up the checkpoint. And what I actually even do in my race in now, when I build something, I will always leave this checkpoint close to my stunt that I'm building, either before it or right after it. So in case I um, see that I have to change something with the race after I published it, something doesn't work with custom cars or whatever, I can always go back to the race, even the published version, and I know my checkpoint directly in front of the stunt or after the stunt will have the prop orientation memorized. So I can just um, always um, tweak the stunts and have exactly the same prop orientation. So yeah, really, really useful tip. I wish I would have known about this back in the day because back in the day, I was always like, yeah, I've got one hour to build now and I didn't even go on the creator because one hour is not enough to finish off a cool stunt. And basically when you exit and you uh, load back in, you you lose all your prop orientation. So um, basically I was only building when I knew I had a few hours time to build. But now with this technique, you can just easily go on the creator for half an hour, start building something come back, pick up your checkpoint, and you'll have your orientation of the props again. Okay, next pro tip. Um, yeah, this is actually, I, I've covered this in my first tutorial, but actually I wanna um, get back on this again. Um, I see a lot of people still nowadays, even some creators which are in there for very long, that are not reverse building their ramps yet. Um, reverse building is very important when you're, um, creating these kinds of stunts because if you see a normal ramp like this, just small ramp stacked, you see that they're actually stacked on top of each other and that you've got like these little dents in here and this will cause car, uh, cars to brick wall on your ramp. So hit this full speed with a Zentorno or whatever, Turismo, even an entity sometimes, you know, if you hit this full speed, your car will just stop dead in its track and brick wall on the ramp. So what you do is you basically reverse build the first three. You can also do it with the first four ramps, basically. And oh yeah, by the way, our um, checkpoint orientation trick, I used it in this one also. So I just pick up this checkpoint. I'll have exactly my orientation for these ramps. Okay, so now I'll take, take out the third ramp. Um, now you look down on the ramp from the top. I mean, this is actually basic stuff, but still some people don't know about it. So. If you know anybody that doesn't build like this yet, please show this to them because it'll just improve all our experiences in GTA Online. These ramps are built smoother. So now in this ramp, you see like this horizontal wooden panel. You see that? So what you want to do is get your third ramp that you just barely see this wooden panel here, basically. Ah, okay, come on. Yeah, it's pretty fidgety. Yeah, you just barely see it now. Now you just want to switch glitch your ramp back in there again. Okay, and if you look at it now, they overlap the other way. Now the third ramp is overlapping the fourth one. So the previous one is overlapping the next one. And that'll make for a really smooth ramp. No car can brick wall on this. And this is exactly ramps if you want to get it perfect get it a bit more down there but you want to have the previous ramp a bit higher than the next one and then you just repeat the process take out the second one do the same thing again and just build your ramp down from there okay wait let me see yeah a bit more okay now if you look at it same thing, it just overlaps the other one from the other direction. And this is how you want to build your super ramps. Also the same process for the last one again. Hey, I'm just really rushing it here. So let me see. Yeah, exactly perfect. So this is a smooth mega ramp. 
that's how you want to build them. This is how you reverse build a ramp. Please show this to anybody if you haven't been using this technique. Please do so because then you can actually use any car on the ramp. Okay, now next pro tip. We've got half loops. Um, if Okay, wait, hold up. Let me see. I already started building some here. Like with all techniques that you basically see, half loops are not 100% smooth because if you look very closely here, you'll actually see this little knob. It just looks out of the ramp a bit and on the sides here too. And this will cause Zentornos or Turismos to brick wall on these ramps. So um, what I did back on PS3 when I didn't know any better, wait, let me first get my orientation here, pick up my checkpoint, cancel it out again. Okay, now I've got exactly the orientation for this. What I did back on PS3 when I didn't know any better, actually on PS3 I didn't even know that you can place this ramp, so the eighth one was always my last one, and then I turned the camera around again. And they had a pretty big bump in here, which caused the cars to brick wall. So what I did back then, you know, I just set a benchmark ramp here. It's exactly at the same spot, basically. Then I tore all of this off again until the first one that's facing the other way. And uh, wait, let me just show you guys. So I tore it all off except for the last ramp you see in that one. And then I just start building this a, t a tiny bit to, to the back of the other one. And that's how I eliminated that thing. But um, I, I know a technique that Sane One uses. I saw it, I saw him use this one. This one's actually just so good. This technique to eliminate like um, this little bump you have in the in the ramp. Now, if you see here, you'll also have the bump in this half loop here. So what you basically start doing, you build your half loop like you're used to it. Oh, wait, let me just take these out for demonstration purposes. So you just build your half loop, your first nine ramps, you turn the camera angle, place your next ramp here. And now what you do, you take um, the ninth and the eighth ramp out again. And your eighth ramp, basically how you were placing it before was you just had it at the edge here and glitched it in with a small sign. Now what Sane 1 figured out, and this is really ingenious, what, you don't place it exactly on top of the edge, but you pull it a bit down, pull it just a tad down, just here about, and now you switch glitch it in again. Alright, so that's ramp number 8, and because we pulled this one a bit down, now the next one we just do it like we're used to, place it exactly at the edge. All right, and now we basically eliminated the small the small nub we had in there, and this is an absolutely smooth half loop. No car can brick wall on this. It's basically like reverse building, it overlaps the other way now. So really, really helpful if you ever build a half loop, use this little trick here. All right, what do we have next? We have wall rides next. Um, I've actually also got tutorials on wall rides. These are old techniques. Um, if you use newer techniques, uh, basically the um, the basic concept is if you use your containers um, aligned this way, um, you basically never want to have big um, big changes in the angle of the container. So it, what you don't want to have in a wall ride is the next container being like this bomb that you that the angle just drastically changes because that'll make for a really bumpy wall ride it's hard to stay on if you want to take like a curve or a quick turn you're gonna uh, it's better to use um, vertical containers like these here but basically um, another thing I always wanted to do a tutorial on, on prop number switch glitching but this is just, uh, I'll do that in, one, in the coming weeks, I'll definitely upload that. But this technique is just absolutely uh, great for getting your uh, containers exactly on top of each other. Wait, this was my benchmark container. All right, so if you continue building your wall right now, you just want to have it angled a tiny bit to the other one. So let's get it in there. This one's always but tricky to get it exactly at this right orientation where you want to have it. That they don't overlap, that they just go perfectly into each other. But yeah, I figured that out, you know, that the, um, the transition is really smooth. 
Now you just switch good to your red container. Yeah, it's not smooth here now, but it doesn't matter. I'm just showing you guys. Um, now that you got that one laid down, what you want to do now is select your next red container again, place it, pick it up again. Now you go down on cycle items where you see the prop number and you will switch uh, prop number switch glitch your container on top of the other one. So what I just did there, place it, pick it up again. Now I'm, I'm prop number 40, uh, 54. This one here is prop number 53. So if I would hit place now and hit left at the same time that it would cycle over to prop number 53, the container gets placed exactly on top of the other one. All right, now you see, this one just got placed exactly on top of the other one. I mean, it can't get any smoother than this. And it's a really good for building wall rides because um, there's no more figuring out to get the top container exactly on top of the other one. It'll just go directly on top of it with this technique. So definitely use this technique when you're building wall rides. All right, so now I place that one and now I'll take another red container, place and pick it up again, go on the prop number, hit left and X and it'll switch right on top of the other one. Yeah, I don't have the transitions right here, but um, yeah, figure that out when you, that they just, the, the transition is smooth. But this is how you get containers exactly on top of each other. You can also do it with three containers, for example, or four containers, depending on how high your wall ride is going to be. Okay, now I got three containers exactly on top of each other. And definitely use this technique when you're building wall rides. Okay, so now um, with, I got one more pro tip for you for vertical props. Uh, I'll show you in a second here. Hold up, we'll just pick up this barrier. Already got my benchmark props here. So, okay, now I'll twist it a bit. So now if it'll, in the wall right, if you want to go for, for a turn, basically. Oh, wait, I got to use this one for the height. Yeah, these benchmark contains, I covered that in previous tutorials, that you use them to pull your prop over it and get it exactly at the height you want to have it. So if I were to place like vertical containers here now, first you want to get it exactly to line up. All right, and I'll take this one out again. Okay, and this one is just so helpful. Um, I think it was PD Pan Mofo who came up with this. Uh, big shout out to him on that note, man. He's got some really good tutorials also. Uh, definitely check him out, PD Pan Mofo. Um, now what you do when you get this vertical, like what everybody was used to do with this barrier, you know, it's just this very narrow spot you gotta find and then you're just always gonna try to switch it up there and you'll often hit it at the wrong angle unless you're really, really trained. I didn't do this in a long time now, so yeah, now I got it. But um, for some people, it takes hundreds of tries until they get it up there. So a really good tip to make it really easy. Um, just find your spot where it's exactly vertical. I found it now. Now you zoom in with R2. Okay, and now until you can't go anymore. Now you can move down and I can move up as far as I want. I won't go beyond this point, basically. So you don't have to find this point anymore. You can just go all the way up with your camera. So you just hit up and X. Okay, now I got, oh no, I placed on the ground. <laughs> okay, hold up. Okay, now I got it. So yeah, a lot of, well, this just saves you so much time, this technique. Um, it's really, really helpful if you're building vertical props. I'll do one more to demonstrate. So yeah, now you got it at the spot where you want to have it. You zoom in until you can't zoom anymore. Go down and just, okay, place it on the ground again. And I got it. So really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, like with the wall rides, if you want to build sharp turns like over here, Use vertical containers and for the rest of the wall ride, just use uh, the normal ones and don't have a big change of angle in it. 
Yeah, so those were some quick pro tips. Um, like I said, it's been a long time since I uploaded some tutorials. I'll be doing much more tutorials now in the next coming weeks, so definitely stay tuned for that. I uh, hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys, it helped you guys out. Um, any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, and I'm out, guys. Thanks. Peace. <laughs>